I want to talk about your relationship with Diablo, actually, um, and what it's like now that you've made three movies together. This is going to frustrate the shit out of you, what I'm about to say. She works really fast. Uh, she, um, she, said, she said to me, she had a two-sentence description of the movie. I said, that's amazing. You have to write that. And then it was like six weeks later that the script showed up. I got an email. The script was attached. And that was the shooting draft. I mean, that's the movie that we went and made. She's a pure writer in that she does not index card. She does not treatment. She just, she knows what the first scene is, and then she just starts writing. And she kind of walks into the woods and walks out the other side. Uh, I mean, it took me seven years to write up in the air. I, I, I don't know how she does it. But we really think of these three films as linked now, Juno, Young Adult, and, and, and Tully. I, I think of all three of them as movies about not knowing where you are supposed to be in the timeline of life. That, you know, Juno is about growing up too fast and young adult is about growing up too slow. And, and this one is about that moment where you become a parent and you are forced to grow up. You are forced to stop occupying a space that your child must now occupy. And, and is the moment where your younger self seems to become a different person. Has she ever called and said, I have an idea, and then you said, no, don't write that? Uh, she has called and said, I have an idea, and I said, I'm, I, I don't think I'm the right director for that. I secretly believe for every script that she's written that I've read that has not become a movie, there's also maybe other, like, just pages, just, uh, like John Hughes. Like, John Hughes apparently had, like, a just script after script that were just processed for him. He just needed to get them out of his system. Actors kind of fall into two categories for me. Uh, there's human puppets who are like very good at puppeteering themselves, and if you, you, you can describe, I need it to come across like that, and they can puppeteer themselves to appear that way, and they can be very good at that, and I've worked with great actors who could do that. And then there's the other group that are actors who are lost in it, and they just actually feel what their character's feeling. And Charlize is, I think, one of two actors who I've ever met who's strangely both. She's 100% aware of everything that's ever happening around her, Crew-wise, camera-wise, acting-wise, on set, in the scene, but simultaneously knows exactly how to uh, get in touch and be vulnerable. I mean, obviously the body stuff is amazing and that her transforming and becoming, you know, a postpartum body and the way it weighs her down, the way that her eyes go blah when she's staring at the television, just the sinkingness of it is so I think that actually good. happened. I mean, I've now, she gets asked about the weight gain a lot and the way she describes it is that it's the first time she really experienced uh, depression, that eating all that food and this constant intake of sugar uh, and and not having a relationship with what her body is anymore uh, and waking herself up in the middle of the night to keep on eating salt and sugar to make sure that she can get her ba body in a short time to where it needs to be. Right after Atomic Blonde, by the way, it put her further into character. It put her deeper into, like, her just brain wasn't where it would normally have been. But I just... I don't know how many, um, I can't think of like depression movies right off the bat. I'm sure there's millions of them or whatever. We follow in a long line of great postpartum great. comedies. 